And we're back once again, only on It Is Last Call. Last Call with the alcohol, only on It Is the Last Call YouTube channel, and also on Blue Wire Hustle Network. So join me on the line. This man here will be fighting once again. It'll be April 17th, and he'll be it'll be uh, Harrison versus Corella. This man here will, will be in action as he'll be taking on Jesse Roman in a super lightweight, in a, uh, in a big TV scrap. Well, a lot of people are excited to see this man in action once again. I give you, uh, well, the, as I said, with a pride and joy, the PBC. I give you it's Omar Juarez. Uh, Omar, so let's start off here with uh, you, Jesse Roman. Uh, how big is this for you? Do you know to get now? You know on the TV card. It's not a bunch of prospects. Not end of the year. This is one of their you know April shows. You're going to be tying that off to the pay per view, and it's with the main event is a fight which a lot of people expect to draw interest, which means a lot of people are going to be tuning into this fight for you. I mean, it's it's a blessing, Chris. It really is. I I've been training very very hard. I mean, after every fight, I the last time I fought was I believe in February. Took a week off and just stayed stuck to the gym. You know, I stayed active, stayed training, stayed sparring, and everything. Most importantly, recover. And I'm ready. I'm really excited. It's a huge blessing that this is going to be my first co main event. It's going to be my first 10 rounder. And I'm going to take full advantage of everything. I'm, I'm really excited. I've been training very, very hard, and we're going to be more than ready. So let's break down Jesse Roman. He hasn't fought in two years. Now, a lot of it was because of pandemic injuries, but He's been around the block. He's beaten, you know, guys who are prospects or, you know, contenders. Uh, what does he bring to the table? Like, when you have seen, you know, clips on him, I guess, at this point, like, what kind of fighter is he that you anticipate coming forward in uh, April 17th? Well, I, I know that he's a tough fighter. I mean, he, he, he's from California, and I know that he's going to, you know, come and take everything away from me. But that's exactly what I expect from every fighter that I step in the ring with, no matter who I fight. No matter who I step in the ring with, I'm going to be more than ready. They can have whatever style it is they want. They have not fought me before. So I'm going to be more than ready. I'm going to be fast, strong, everything. And I've been training very, very hard. And I'm excited, man. I really am. But I know he's going to come and try to take everything away from me. How tough is it, you know, trying to scout a guy who you don't know what he really is? I mean, as I said, he comes 40 fights a lot. That was, you know, as we said, about 2018, last time we saw him fight. It's been three years. I mean, you, there's been no tape. You might have changed. You might have picked up some new. You might have picked up some new tricks, as they say. You might have done a lot of stuff. Is there a bit of a sort of you know uncertainty in terms of like okay, what what do we what, what can we expect from this guy? Like, what is he going to do? Especially when, as you said, or as, as people pointed out, when it's three years of no fighting, how much do you you know how much tape is actually relevant when you're scouting a guy? Like well, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I watched maybe a couple of his fights, and that, that was all I needed to see. Really, for every fighter that I fight, I know that the day of fight night, they're going to be completely different. They can change up their style. They can, like you said, learn new tricks and stuff like that. So I'm not really too focused on that, not too focused on what he does, what he doesn't do. I know for a fact that if I train 100% with everything I got mentally, physically, emotionally, everything, I know everything's going to come together on fight night and like I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more than ready for whatever he brings to the table. We're going to go back to this fight in a bit. Now, I want to go back to your last fight. Once again, uh, as I said, it, we had you on, and uh, we were talking about a contract, we talked about, you know, the big fights coming up here for you. How weird was, you know, this last, the last fight we, we spoke to where, first off, it's still, the, you know, it's still this bubble thing. It's still everything going on. There's no fans. How tough is it, you know, especially your last fight when it's like, okay, there's no crowd. And most fighters, I know, love feeding off the crowd. For you, how weird was it when it's like, okay, um, where's the fans? <laughs> yeah, I really do miss the fans. I, I was actually looking at some video of uh, my fights a, a while back, and I do miss, the, I miss, I do miss the, that big adrenaline rush of, of the fans. But, I mean, it is what it is. You know, it, it, it happens. I'm just glad to be a part of history in a way because not everybody got to fight in, during the pandemic. So I look at it as a blessing, but I mean, I, I really, really do miss the fans. I really hope that my next fight after this one will be with fans. But, you know, we, we have a job to take care of and it doesn't phase me at all. I mean, I'm ready. I'm more than ready. Raul Chirino, knockout victory, Shine Exposition Center. Uh Besides the victory, like, what were you happy about? I mean, every fighter I talked to is like, okay, this fighter want to work on this. This fighter, you know, 
the goal is I want to see improvements. So, so going into the Torino fight, what improvements did your camp want to see in terms of just you as a fighter? Uh, I feel like the recovery part had a lot to do with it. Uh, the, the fights before that, you know, I was training and training and training and training. And I feel like, there were a couple of changes that I had to do recovery wise. You know, there were a lot of times where I was just too tired to even do anything, to do ice baths, to even stretch or do anything for that fight, for that specific fight. You know, I was training just like, just like I always, you know, training with everything I have. My meals were perfect. My, my nutrition was perfect. It was just the recovery wise. I feel like it could have been different. So that fight, I focused a lot on my recovery and I felt very explosive, very fast, very strong. And I feel like this fight, you know, I've learned a lot definitely from this last fight. But this fight is gonna. I'm gonna. You know, I'm. I'm more than ready. I'm more than ready, and I'm excited. I really am. Is it still weird? I mean, I, I know this has been now the third. This will be the fourth fight. But is it weird when you can literally hear your corner talk? You know, shot out of instruction. Like most fights, it's like okay, you'll be able to talk in the corner. You go, oh, yep. You'll nod your head. You go, okay, we're gonna do this. And then the fight breaks out, and you're just in the motion. Is it weird now when you can literally hear them in between corner going, you know what? basically going, you know, pump the jab, head moving, head moving, you know, and it's like, oh, crap, I can, I can actually hear these guys. I mean, it, it, at first it was, you know, the first, the first time I did fight in the bubble because I fought there three times. It's going to be my fourth, actually. It was weird at first. I mean, to me, it just felt like a sparring, just with smaller gloves and a lot more serious. But I feel like when I'm in there, it's just I, got, I have a job to do. I got to do what I got to do. And. Actually, with the fans, I can actually hear my corner because, I mean, through sparring, through training, that's all I hear. Just my, just my coach is telling me what to do, telling me what to do. And I feel like when I'm in there, it's just me and my coach, you know, getting to work. So it's kind of the same thing, but not really. You know, it's just missing the fans. That's, that's pretty much it, just the crowd. Will it be weird when the fans come back? Because, as you said, it's a sparring. It's, it's a live fight, but, you know, there is that element missing where, if you know, if you're, if you send, if a fan sends, you know, a knockout, they'll pour it on. If fans sends you hurt, they'll pour it on. You feed off that emotion. Is it gonna be weird, you know, when you, you know, now have this will be, as you said, your fourth fight, and each fight you get more used to just okay, it's a sparring session. You go in there and you just you focus one on one. And there's no emotion. It's basically just, you know, two guys sparring in the gym, which is higher stakes. Uh. I don't think it's going to be weird. I think it's going to be something I'm, I'm going to look forward to that I'm going to be excited about. And like you said, yeah, it, it is. That's my, the most favorite part. You know, when, when a good punch is connected, you know, you hear the ooh and the it's just like an adrenaline rush, a, a confidence booster that really, really helps me during the fight. So I'm more of excited rather than, you know, worried about if it's going to feel weird or not. I'm really excited for the fans to come back. Give me something that you've missed. And just, you know, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, boxing wise. Just because of this whole pandemic, a lot of guys have talked to, there's all the small stuff they miss, whether it's hanging out with friends, going to a restaurant, you know, having breakfast with friends, you know, movie theaters. There's always something. And, you know, as I said, you're, you're 21 years old. So you're a young man, or, you know, you've turned from a kid to a young man, but you've had to grow up a lot. Well, give me something you've missed this past year that you just took for granted. Now you're going, Man, I can't wait to do this again. I really miss motivating the youth, man. I really do. I miss going into the schools and hearing the the the, the students, you know, asking for about questions and 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 it's just it, people in general. I feel like it's just it's crazy, you know. I've I've been in how long has it been? It's it's, it's been a while uh, this pandemic, but it's it's We're been a very a year long now. Time. I mean, it's yeah, been a year yeah, since they shut everything down. So it's like yeah, it's crazy. It's been a very long time since I've spoken to a school. So I feel like that is something that I've missed a lot. That motivates me as well. You know, when I'm inspiring the youth, inspiring kids to be successful in their lives, it really motivates me when I feel like giving up in the ring, when I feel like giving up in sparring, when I feel like giving up in, you know, the morning road work, stuff like that. I always tell myself that I have a lot of people to prove right and way more people to prove wrong. I feel like I just miss the people in general, man. How tough is it for you being a social creature, but, you know, by nature, you, as it seems like you love being around people, whether it's, you know, as I said, motivating youth, whether it's helping other people, how tough has this been on you just as a guy, you know, being unable to be social, unable to be around people because, hey, six feet apart, 
social distancing, you wear the mask, and yeah. you're a bitch to wear these masks because you feel like you're almost your chin is locked in with those masks. I mean, how tough has it been just, you know, not being able to be around people? I mean, it was tough, but I always told myself that tough times don't last. I have to continue to work hard. I have to continue to make a name for myself. I have to continue to rack up these wins. And I know that, well, I knew, you know, during the pandemic, this is not going to last. I just have to stay ready for an opportunity. And that's exactly what happened. You know, we were in the pandemic. All gyms were closed. I was training out of my garage, running every day, just staying ready for any calling. That's exactly what happened. You know, we ended up getting a call from my managers. Hey, uh, there's going to be, a, we're going to, you know, try to bring boxing back, but it's going to be big changes, but we want to know if you're going to be ready in four weeks. Told them, absolutely. You know, I've been training. I've been staying active. We're ready. And it's been like that ever since. I've just been telling myself, you know, just, just continue going, continue going. Everything will go back to normal soon. Tough times don't last, but it, it, it was kind of tough, man. It really was. Because like I said, the people motivate me a lot. And that crowd, man, I, I miss the crowd. <laughs> Once again, we got Omar Juarez here on the show. And as I said, we're talking all things, of course. Uh, Jesse Roman, we're talking uh, his, four, his fight on April 17th. All this is going on here. I know Texas is leading the way and it's getting better. Is it still tough, though, when, you know, as, if, and again, as I said, you, you miss the kids. I'm guessing there's also like, you miss, I'm guessing, hanging out with friends during, a, you know, during Sundays on a, on a brunch or, going out to a restaurant or a bar and having, you know, dinner and drinks, maybe not you know, alcoholic drinks, but just, you know, do you, how tough is it still when, you know, as you said, all this stuff at 21 years old, you can't do right now. And as I said, I feel bad because nobody taught this. Nobody expected this. This is just something we had to throw on you. It's like, okay, well, get used to it, grow up. And do you ever, do you feel sort of angry that you've had to grow up this quickly, this soon, had to get rid of, you know, the innocence? Uh. I mean, not too angry about it. I'm try, I try my very best to look at any situation as a positive thing. You know, I felt like this just is a character building situation where I can be alone. I can really figure out who I am as a fighter, as a person. And I, I really have, you know, it's definitely something different. Definitely something that not a normal 20, 21 year old would do, but I try to view everything as a blessing as in disguise, but Man, I, I, I'm really, I really am ready for the crowd to come back. I really am ready to everything to go back to normal, man. It, it's, it's definitely, it's definitely different. <laughs> it all comes back down once again to Jesse Roman. He was in your shoes at one point. And, you know, as, you, as we said, you are 10 and 0 with five knockouts. You're a highly rated prospect. And this is a guy like himself who at one point he started off at, I'm looking here at his record. He used to, you know, 12 and 0 with 10 knockouts. He knows what's be he knows what it's like to be you, where you're a hot young prospect and you're being fed guys who are you know basically trying to make names of themselves. You're trying to make a name of him. How big is it for this fight to not get caught up in all the you know all the little tricks, all the little, you know, maybe veteran stuff that he has planned because he's gonna try to make an ugly fight. He wants to drag it in deep water and start forcing to go, okay, well, this is going to be like your last 11 fights. This is going to be a bit of a test. Oh, I'm, I'm ready for it. I, I know that I have the best team behind me, and I feel like I'm more than ready for it. I'm growing as a fighter physically, mentally, emotionally, and like I said, he hasn't fought anybody like me. He hasn't fought me before, and, you know, he can fight whoever he wants. I've always told myself this about any opponent, even the amateurs. They can fight whoever they want. They haven't fought me before. And I'm excited. I really am. Like I said, I've been training very, very hard. I have stopped training and my sparring is looking very good. You know, my, my strength and condition, I've been very, very active and I'm ready. I'm going to be ready, you know, fight night, April 17th. But I'm going to take full advantage of this awesome opportunity that I'm getting on Fox. And, you know, he could try whatever he wants. I'm going to be more than ready for it. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, we are proud to have a show. It's Omar Juarez. Uh, Omar, before I let you go, where can fans check you out at? Where is the Twitter page, Instagram, the website? Uh, where can fans hit you up at? On Facebook, I have my Facebook page, Omar El Relampo Juarez. On Instagram and Twitter, at I am Omar Juarez. Omar Juarez, ladies and gentlemen, once again, he'll be fighting April 17th only on PBC on Fox. Harrison versus Morello. Check your time on local listings for details. We come back. We got a lot more going on here. Only on it is last call. Last call with the alcohol. Only on the Blue Wire Hustle Network and the Last Call YouTube channel.